Hello, it is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, and on top of that, it appears to be a puzzle with an unusual rule set. I haven't actually really looked into it yet. So it's apparently something called a uniclu crossword, which combines a cross and down. I don't quite know what that means. So I will we'll look at it once we start the crossword. Quickly, I will thank a few people who have brought you today's edition of the Daily Solve. So thank you to Resmi, Bradley Pirtle, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. Thank you to the three of them, all benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks to help directly support this show and make it a sustainable enterprise for me, then you can head to patreon.com slash daily solve and investigate that. Benefactors get the Let's Check the Crosses mug, as well as that uh, recognition and thanks on these episodes. But everyone, regardless of tier on the um, Patreon campaign, gets access to the full array of bonus video solves. And um, also the extra channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And as a reminder, the Daily Solve Discord chat server is otherwise, outside of that one extra channel, free for anyone to join and uh, hang out with other members of the Daily Solve community, post your Wordle scores, discuss the latest New York Times crossword, the latest Wordle, other puzzles, crossword construction. Anyway, links to all of these things are available in the description field underneath the video. And actually today, there weren't really particularly any comments sort of correcting things or, or with necessary uh, clarifications. So I think I'm just going to move on because I want to figure out what what's going on with this Uniclu crossword. So let's read this carefully. Oh, actually, I should credit the, the constructor. Uh, this crossword is a Wednesday crossword, of course. So a themed puzzle of midweek difficulty. It was constructed by Ori Bryan and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And Ori Bryan has done a handful of puzzles for the New York Times, maybe half a dozen or so. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is a Uniclu crossword, which combines a cross and down. When two answers share a number, they also share a clue. All right, so what I suppose that means is that one across and one a down, one down, one a down, have the, um, have the same clue. And so they, in other words, two different answers that could be clued the same way. And actually, in the case of, for instance, one across and down, they're the same length as well. So really, without getting other letters crossing those answers, there's really absolutely no way that you could know which is which, unless there's something about the way they're clued that actually connects to being across or down, which I doubt. Anyway, I have a version of this where I've removed that notice so that we can fit the whole crossword on the screen. So let's um, give it a shot, ready to get started why not? I say, okay. Reposition an icon, maybe. And then similarly, one down would be reposition an icon, maybe. So drag, maybe as in drag an icon on a computer desktop, perhaps. And then what would the other reposition an icon? Hang, maybe? Hang a piece of art? An icon, a religious icon in a museum? Uh... I don't know, but there's not really... Oh, actually, no. Right, they're going to start with the same letter, of course. Why didn't that occur to me immediately? Uh, uh, They're always going to. Um, All all of these... uh, What are they called? All of these uniclues will um, begin. Each of the two answers will begin with the same letter by definition because they start on the same cell. Uh, I don't know, though. Anyway... We've got the same thing with five. <laughs> key inspiration and C notepad. Key inspiration. I wonder if this is Francis Scott Key, who composed the music to the Star Spangled Banner. Um, well, they're probably not both that, but maybe one of them is. I don't know. I actually want to get out of these Uniclu clues because I find them paralyzing because I don't, I, even if I got, even if I got to an answer. I wouldn't know if it were across or down. So let's look at some others. Crowds sound could be a roar. So that makes me wonder if this reposition and icon is indeed drag. And let's, let's look at some other crosses around drag and roar and see if we can, if that helps. Chocolate and caramel candy. Is that a Rolo? Is that a Hershey's candy perhaps, I think maybe? And 
check it out for yourself. Go see, seems likely. Sub, a, a substitute, could be an alternate. And 17, major crop for Russia and Canada. Oats, it, it looks like here. And um, here we have, oh, it's annoying that it doesn't highlight the across for us as well. Reposition an icon, say, uh, drop or what? One who wasn't due to arrive informally. It could be a baby delivered prematurely, a preemie. Is that how you'd spell that? Um, drop. Reposition an uh, Oh, oh. Is it drag and drop? Yes, it is. Okay. I think that's what it is. It's drag and drop. These, th this Uniqlo creates a single, a single answer. I thought it was going to be two alternatives to the same clue, uh, to <laughs> alternates or subs for the same clue. No, I think it's creating a single answer, a combine, a compound answer. So key inspiration then would likely be the stars and stripes colloquially the American flag. And so that does relate to the United States national anthem. And all right, that, that made, <laughs> made the prospect of the Uniclu suddenly seem much more approachable than I, than I thought it was a moment ago. All right, let's keep solving the crossword. Number of Bronte sisters or Kar Kar Karamazov brothers would be three, the brothers Karamazov and the uh, Bronte sisters, the, the novelists. Okay. You in hymns could be the, um, Brothers Karamazov, the Dostoevsky book. Uh, checks held by Santa. Um, oh, reins, reins, of course, the reins of his sleigh. The checks, meaning he's uh, the checks on the reindeer. And here we have Grande of the Voice to fans. This must be Ariana Grande. I'm actually not sure what the voice is, but uh, show, I guess. All right, Alamo offering. Oh, a rental car. So not Alamo, the not the fort, but rather the rental car company, presumably named after it, I suppose. Kind of fragrant oil in some Asian cuisines would be sesame oil. You could have uh, regular sesame oil or toasted sesame oil. And let's look at another uniclue. Uh, uniclue. Uni Boy, okay. Genre with a hall of fame in Ohio. Ah, rock and roll. So we can fill rock and roll into our two Uniclu answers. And ones with a lot of pull in agriculture are oxen. They literally pull a plow. A daisy variety also called a marguerite. Is that an ox eye also called a marguerite? I think it probably is. And actor Jared, Jared Leto. Actor who everybody seems to have very strong opinions about, I've noticed. Everyone has an opinion about that guy constellation known as the whale. I think that's Cetus. And Leslie Blank, Amy Poehler's role on Parks and Recreation. Amy, uh, nope, I think was that character's name on Parks and Recreation. I think Parks and Recreation came up within the last few weeks. Um, I think in reference to the state in which it's set, maybe Indiana, I think. And count to count could be to tally something up. And poppin' as... Poppin' as a party, it would be lit. That party is lit in modern modern parlance. And here we have, am I dreaming? This could have been clued as some sort of French for friend, as it often is, but in this case, in English, am I dreaming? To collect as profit is to reap. To sow and to reap. Fountain treats are malts. A, a malted, I don't know, malted what? Malted drink. Oops. Um, chocolate malted, I don't know what... It is a malted, <laughs> I don't know what uh, adjective the malted is operating. Oh, sorry. I had an extremely sudden sneeze. Usually it's much more gradual for me. Apologies. Um, anyway, uh, some protest handouts are leaflets. And an area near Tribeca in New York City would be Soho, I'd think. And a Plains tribe could be sort of rhyming, I guess, the Oto tribe. And what about up here? Oh, here, here. this will be another um, uniclue. So principle of complementary duality. Ah, yin and yang, I think. Not yin and yang, yin and yang. And here we have some people bow to it. Some people bow to it. Oh, 
I wonder if it could be some people bow to it and it's referring to bowing a violin. Is there any way that could be the case? Might be overcomplicating this. Let's just let's look elsewhere. Gets comfortable with, could be adapts to. I do. I certainly had to adapt to this unit clue convention. That took me, took me some time. Things taken in class could be notes. And, oh, some people bow to it, an idol. You could bow to an idol. You could worship an idol. And joyful giddiness is glee. A chewy Easter treat is... Oh, a peep, the strange, stale-tasting marshmallow uh, confections. Uh, did some crunches at lunch. Eight, oh, eight, ate, ate some food. I guess this sort of crunched and this sort of, I don't know, eating some, I don't know, celery sticks or something, something very crunchy, did some crunches, ate. Mass X acceleration or mass times acceleration in physics is um, the equation for force. And, or rather the formula for force, I guess the equation would be mass times acceleration equals force. Uh, to mess up is to err. Issa of Insecure, Issa Ray. That's a great show. I really love uh, Insecure by Issa Ray. I think, I think it has ha had or is having its final season, which I've not yet seen. Uh, DC Comics anti-heroine, a.k.a. Selena Kyle. Um... Oh, cat, Catwoman! It must be that. Must be the that must be the um, alter ego of Catwoman, or I guess Catwoman is the alter ego of Selena Kyle. I suppose each is the alter ego of the other. All right. If one is if something is spoken, it is oral. And Italy's Mount Etna is a volcano. And if something is pleasantly concise, well, short was my first guess, but is that pleasantly? There's I must be missing an extremely obvious fill here. Pleasantly concise. Oh, right. It's a uniclue. I completely forgot. Yes. It is not just short. It is also sweet. It is both of these things. It is short and sweet. It is pleasantly concise. Um, it's easy for me to, to lose track of that. I just get into the ordinary crossword solving habit autopilot bright color in the garden tomato red maybe is that a color sure why not i suppose don't really know that i think of tomato red as a color necessarily but i guess i guess a tomato is not so much a specific shade but a way of indicating that the red is is bright you could sort of someone's cheeks are as red as a tomato i guess i don't know a talk show visitor it, maybe there's an official pantone color for tomato red i'll have to look that up uh, talk show visitor is, um, I don't know. Id's counterpart could be the ego, the id and the ego. Super ego is not going to fit in here. And most, most faithful could be truest, but let's look at the cross on this. Loud chewing for some. It could be a pet peeve. It could really irritate you. Oh, a talk show visitor would be a TV guest. I see. There we, there we go. That looks right. And a medieval adventure tale, a jest from, from French for uh, sort of a, a gesture, I guess, uh, a, a feat, accomplishment. Miracle blank, miracle grow, that's a brand name for a fertilizer, I suppose, or sort of a plant food, a sort of accelerated fertilizer kind of thing. I don't know. First vegetable grown in space. Is it a potato? Like in uh, like in The Martian, the book and film The Martian. Uh the astronaut grew potatoes. Oh, is that also the genuinely the first vegetable grown in space? That's really interesting. If so, could be wrong. So let's check the crosses. Author of macabre tales in brief would be E. A. Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, Epo. And hearty meal options are stews. An essential ingredient in Welsh rarebit. Welsh rarebit is a a toast. Uh, sorry, not a toast. It's a it's a sandwich, a uh, toasted sandwich with with cheese. Um. And here we have another um, uh, uniclue. Fashion accessories in a 1940s number one Dinah Shore hit. Um, buttons and bows? Looks like it must be the case. And it sort of sounds familiar. I'm To be, to be honest, I'm mainly getting this from the crosses in the puzzle. But um, it sounds like it's something. It sounds like a song, Buttons and Bows. Um and here we have add fuel to would be stoke. Stoke the fire, add fuel to the fire. 
Info collected by HR. Um, could be, I don't know, salaries. I guess that wouldn't be so much collected by HR. Could be SSNs, social security numbers. That that often is the sort of thing that that the puzzle wants in this kind of clue. Let's check the crosses. Beats easily, um, wins out maybe? It doesn't seem quite right. Neutral shades, I don't know, tans maybe? That would be a neutral color. Let's go already. Um, I'm in? I'm not, I'm not very certain about tans or I'm in. I'm filling them in and we'll see if we can confirm or deny any of this. One's tending to brood. Um, so hens literally tend to a brood of chicks, right? Do you call chicks a brood? Um, the question mark here is the pun indicator, which means we shouldn't read this in, we shouldn't use the surface meaning. The surface interpretation of one's tending to brood would be uh, people who have a tendency towards melancholy, towards a brooding, uh, I don't know, sort of countenance. Um, but the question mark, the pun, says something else is going on. So I suspect this means an animal that has a brood, tends to a brood of offspring. Uh, although T-I-H doesn't look very good here. Oh, actually, maybe it does. Maybe it does look, maybe what doesn't look good is I'm in, which was the one, one of these about which I was least confident. So this combined as versatile wardrobe pieces looks like mix and match to me. It might've been, it was probably our last Uniqlo actually. So Mitch, mix and match. And what was this? Let's go already. I don't know, actually. What about this? Beats easily. Aces out? It doesn't look at like anything. Veni. I came. Veni Vidi Vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. Um, and here, beats easily. Is it aces out? I don't really know that phrase, I don't think. Here we have strobe light gas, which is xenon. That, that certainly sounds right. I suppose aces out must be a... Um, you ace somebody out. You beat them easily. That must be a phrase. It's not one with which I was familiar, but that that's fine. Now I am. <laughs> Let's go already. Oh, it's come on. All right, there we go. I wasn't getting on. I wasn't getting to the contraction. I suppose you could say "Let's go." Let's is a contraction of "Let us," so maybe that's indicating the "come on" contraction. I don't. Probably wasn't unintentional, but um, isn't a strongly operative clue there because "come on" is very. Um, it's it's very important that that's a contraction, whereas let's is let's is such a common contraction. Let's is essentially its own word anyway, in a way that come on isn't. Come on still reads like an intentional contraction uh, in written language. I mean, anyway, okay. Stackable food item. An Oreo? <laughs> it's an Oreo stackable food item. So I can't forget if I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but Oreo is one of, is le sort of legendarily one of the canonical pieces of crossword ease to the point where I think it might act, I think it's actually used less often than it used to be. So it, it may, if, if you're a rec more recent uh, solver of the crossword, it may not even occur to you that Oreo is a piece of crossword ease in the way that say aloe or acai or ono or uh, eno is because it doesn't come up as much. But I think one of the reasons it doesn't come up as much is because it has such a reputation as an overused crossword answer, to the point that I believe, Will Shorts, I believe that among New York Times crossword construction, you aren't allowed to use Oreo as an answer unless the clue has never been used before. So I, that's what I've read. I don't know if, the, I mean, I, I haven't done any sort of statistical word analysis on the corpus of New York Times crossword puzzles dating back decades to determine if this is true, but uh, that's what I have read. And so it makes me wonder if stackable food item is the first time Oreo has been clued as such. Anyway, let's finish off the puzzle. We're just about there. A scholarship consideration could be need. Scholarship according to need rather than merit, or, or possibly both of those things, but uh, but need a consideration. And a PlayStation, PlayStation maker is the Sony Corporation. And let's check the crosses quickly. Perceptive is keen. Yes, you're, I don't know, a keen observer, a perceptive observer of... Um, how Oreos clued in crosswords. And a miniature whirlpool is an eddy, a little, little whirlpool, a little vortex. And there it is, there's the crossword. So after starting off feeling very unsure of myself around these uniclues, I felt very, I felt as though I were on very unsteady ground. Um, 
once I got to, I guess it was drag and drop. I suppose it was getting enough uh, crosses to fill in. I got drag and then once I realized this was drop, I remember, I think, I think what I was trying to do was figure out how drop means reposition an icon maybe. And I was thinking, what on, how on earth is dropping repositioning an icon? What could that possibly mean? And that maybe took me longer than it should to have seen what is actually going on with the uniclues as they're called. Um, but then once I did, the rest of them actually got much easier. So this, this, actually, it's in my mind, it switched identities from the kind of theme that um, needs to be reverse engineered, that needs to already be, whose answers need to be solved before you can understand the, uh, I don't know, nature of the theme or how the theme relates to a particular clue. Uh, it changed from that to the kind that actually helps me solve the puzzle more quickly. Uh, so that it became something where once I understood that the uniclues were single compound answers joined by the word and, it got much, much, much easier to fill these in. And I was able to fill most of them in immediately upon reading the clue, which was a huge help. And so that actually made this quite a quick solve. I mean, this Wednesday solve in some ways I think might actually have been faster than if not for digressions, this probably would have been a faster solve for me, maybe even than Monday and Tuesday, once I got the identity, once I once I understood what was going on with the theme. Anyway, let me know if that was the experience you had or not. I mean, I would be curious to know if there are people for whom this theme remained somewhat mysterious. I think it's only because I, I, I delved into this corner up here and started chipping away at the crosses. That, that was the reason that happened. If I had continued to march through the puzzle in a typical fashion, it might have my, my realization might have come come later. Anyway, really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed those um, those uniclues. That was fun, and uh, liked <laughs> liked getting all those uh, answers quickly once I understood what was going on with them. Um, otherwise, I think fairly fairly reasonable puzzle in terms of the fill. Don't think there was anything that really struggled with. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe even slightly gentle for a Wednesday. I'm not sure. Hard to say. Uh, let me know how you felt. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I also hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do subscribe. Uh, and you'll see these videos as they go up each day in an easy to find manner in your subscriptions tab on your YouTube app or, um, or uh, website or whatever. And if you know someone who might enjoy these puzzles, please do please do pass it along. As I as I've mentioned recently, it's the only the word of mouth is the only tool really I have to um, spread the word about these things. So to the extent you uh, think you might know someone who would enjoy it, I would absolutely love and appreciate that recommendation uh, on your behalf. So thank you to anybody who's done that over the over the months. And uh, thanks thanks for getting to the end of these videos. <laughs> Sometimes I remember to thank people for that because that in itself is uh, already uh, a nice thing. So thanks for that. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle. I always think of it, as I say, as the first really tricky puzzle of the week, and usually a puzzle with an interesting, ambitious, or intricate, uh, or even just particularly entertaining theme. Look forward to that. Maybe some circled cells, maybe some shaded cells. I can only hope. Uh, but until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.